let's talk about what's going on uh, in our labs even further and uh, kind of um, talk about those molten salt fission product release tests, which has been performed earlier this year. Uh, so I personally didn't do the test. It's my colleague uh, Ray and uh, Stewart who did the test. And it's the first time I'm presenting those results, which are very preliminary. But I was thinking that uh, maybe uh, here it's a good opportunity to mention those tests in front and bring the awareness that uh, there is uh, stuff very exciting also going on uh, beside 3D printing in the uh, Chalk River. Um, so um, let's move ahead. And I will have to give you and inform you of the context uh, of uh, those tests and uh, how rapidly they have been done and the re reason um, why uh, they were performed and conducted the way they uh, were done. Um, so I will have to read, sorry. Um, <laughs> so uh, maybe you are knowing that uh, in uh, Chalk River, the, not too long ago, we, have, uh, we had uh, still a um, uh, research reactor operating, which uh, was the uh, NRU reactor. And uh, this re reactor was also the reactor where the largest quantity of medical isotopes were produced. But unfortunately, there was a decision taken to uh, shut down this reactor uh, in March. So uh, we tried to rush uh, uh, to prepare additional and last minute kind of test uh, before uh, this reactor shut down. And uh, this is uh, the reason why we were pushing very hard for doing some, um, some uh, irradiation in this reactor. So also, uh, the first uh, objective for doing what uh, was called a grain boundary inventory seven uh, test um, was not really uh, initially to study molten, so, uh, molten salt fission product released. But it was a way for us to get some funding and uh, be able to do some uh, quick tests. <laughs> so um, as you can see, there was uh, four different types of tests, uh, which was a plan. Some uh, uh, green boundary inventory from MOX, from Toya, so which is kind of relevant for you guys. Um, some fission product release from uh, UO2 under uh, molten lead. And finally, we managed to squeeze there some uh, fission product release from molten salt. Again, we didn't start uh, from molten salt, or we didn't irradiate in molten salt. But what we had in our uh, inventory on site at, at, at uh, Chalk River, we had uh, quite a a lot of uh, irradiated uh, UO2, but also thoria fuel. So what we have done is actually using uh, those uh, irradiated uh, oxide fuel and um, trace uh, radiated those fuel in NRU before the shutdown to rebuild the short-lived uh, fission product inventory. And then we converted those uh, irradiated oxide fuel in molten salt, in what cells, to perform those uh, molten uh, those uh, fission product release tests. Okay, and as I mentioned, we try to to um, to um, take the opportunity of another project which was funded, and this project was more looking at uh, severe accident condition. So this is the reason why we didn't really uh, perform this test, test in a normal operating condition, under normal operating condition, but in more severe uh, condition. This is the reason why we did some uh, the test at 1,000 degrees C. And this is the duration of the test. So we expose uh, the molten salt, uh, well, the oxide converted in molten salt uh, under those conditions, which is kind of beyond a uh, design basics accident. So the intent was first to say, to, to assess what will happen with the fission product. We, we, we didn't have the intent of really um, quantify or anything, or, you know, having very accurate measurement of those fission product, but uh, 
to the best of our knowledge, it was kind of the first step to answer the question and the belief that uh, fission products are retained in molten salt. So we were thinking that it was very important for us to perform those tests, even though it was not in the ideal condition. So we performed those tests in the inert steam and air environments. And uh, what I will present today is really preliminary results. And the data processes is not completed yet. And hopefully it will be published just sometimes next, next year. OK. So as I mentioned, we started with uh, irrigated and then trace irrigated fuel to uh, fuel. Um, under the dose condition here. Um, apparently, under those condition, we minimize the segregation of the number of metals into uh, five metal particles. Uh, it's important. Tell me. <laughs> uh, then we uh, removed the fuel uh, in uh, hot cells where we did this uh, conversion into fluoride. Uh, following this process here. So we, the composition of the, the molten salt we were targeting uh, was this sort of composition. And actually, as I mentioned, we also had a test where we replaced uh, uranium dioxide by thorium dioxide. So we would have, hopefully, uh, thorium tetrafluoride uh, tetra in this mixture as well. Uh, but, uh, we um, really added a bit of um, zirconium uh, to apparently uh, deal with more rigorous issues. Right? Right. <laughs> and also, in some of the tests, we replace uh, NIF by NACL. <coughs> Why? Is because, I don't know if you remember some uh, presentation by one of the workers yesterday, uh, that um, there is some, uh, some concept where we, the fuel is chloride, but the second loop is fluoride. Let us see which one I'm talking about. Anyway, so under accident condition, we can imagine that the, there is some bridge between the different loops, the primary loops and secondary loops, and that some uh, chloride will be, fluoride will be, um, will be mixed with some fluoride, so that's why we were doing some tests. So uh, this conversion um, was uh, done in our cells, and uh, the sample, which uh, according to race uh, scale units, is like this. And um, so uh, that um, mixture of different fluoride and the uh, irrigated the U2 or thorium dioxide was equal to about 400, 500 degrees which, um, which uh, apparently is a process for doing this uh, conversion between oxide and fluoride. But if you are looking here, what was actually maybe an issue, and that's, uh, is that this, uh, this uh, process uh, forms some water which with uh, fuel is in the same way, that's not a good thing. Anyway, but under uh, severe accident condition, we can't think that it may happen, right? So, okay, we want to end with this uh, conversion method. We are talking about severe accident condition, you know, not ideal and right, to, <laughs> to measure precisely any kind of thermal physical property here. So, uh, doing this uh, first uh, eating at those temperature, we saw that uh, the noble gases were released during this reaction, and for us it was a sign that uh, the conversion was completed as well. And um, yes, because uh, the overfishing product was not uh, released at under this temperature, so about that. Then. Uh, the molten salt sample uh, was exposed to uh, 1,000 degrees for about 4,500 seconds and uh, was, was observed in a, a, a tube furnace by um, gamma spectrometry. It's like this that we were detecting the fission particles 
as uh, as usual uh, as usually uh, gamma in the moment. And we will do some uh, first test analysis after um, those uh, molecular experiments uh, using SCN and and I guess uh, any uh, <laughs> kind of element analysis. And though no, that is not done yet. <laughs> Here is uh, the experimental uh, setup. Um, okay. So this is uh, in uh, hot cells in uh, in Chapel Hill laboratory. Um, so we have this uh, funny tube where we have a little uh, sample key. We have a direct uh, viewing gamma spectrometer transmitting directly the sample. Um, so we uh, place this uh, boat here um, in the middle of the furnace uh, when the temperature of Reach and for for uh, four thousand five hundred uh, second, and here we have a gas supply system where we add inner air and um, and water supply because we were uh, using this nebulizer <coughs> and take a little little steam and see what will happen. Um, downstream uh, this uh, tube we had different filters on answer and then gas at the module bubbler. And uh, we actually were collecting, well, actually, flowing the fission gas uh, through those uh, delay corridor gamma spectrometer. It's like this that we were monitoring actually the, <coughs> the um, fission gas, Krypton uh, and Zen. Uh, closer loop, uh, loop, closer loop, sorry. That's uh, so how the apartments look like. So inside of this uh, push rod, which was uh, in stainless steel, um, there, there was a tight key on the cover. This uh, push rod was actually uh, painting, spray painting uh, with uh, bone nitrite to, to, because we were anticipating some corrosion and issue during this test. Uh, the tube was uh, made of uh, astalloy and alloy. And actually, the boat uh, was made of asteroid and C, with a little bit of uh, chromium. Oh, it uh, has a better, uh, a better uh, resistance to corrosion, or it's maybe just that uh, we was the only type of material which was uh, available within this time constraint we had. <laughs> anyway, uh, this boat uh, had uh, also some uh, painting uh, of bone nitrite uh, on the Outer surface, not in the inner surface, because Ray didn't want to to um, to add uh, any more um, impurity in the in the in the okay. Here is uh, so we it's this table gives a test matrix of the different uh, seven tests uh, conducted during this experiment. So here is the the uh, soil type and the different environment. I'm not too sure why he was using this here. Millimole per second. So I'm not too sure how we will convert in millimeter per second. Sorry, but you will have to ask him if you are interested. So as I mentioned, there was two tests uh, adding some chloride in the mixture. And also the set, the last test was uh, with um, uh, chlorine. But unfortunately, it was we were uh, we were able to do only the under uh, inner atmosphere in this case. So here are the first preliminary result and first observation which was um, uh, done during this uh, test. So, under those in quite high temperature, it has been observed that uh, yeah, there is some retention, but also some release. 30% uh, release of cesium uh, isotopes, a bit comparable release of iodine, uh, but a different, a different percentage, so we are not sure that uh, this, those uh, species were released as a cesium iodine on uh, There was a much less uh, release of iodine uh, uh, from the chloride, chloride salt, from 
compared to uh, those uh, from uh, pure Python result. <laughs> and uh, we observe the release of uh, ruthenium, uh, particularly in uh, oxidizing environment, which is kind of respected. It's also uh, observed uh, when uh, you study efficient product release from the uh, uh, side region. So what was also kind of uh, very exciting during this experiment is that uh, during the oxidizing uh, environment test, it appeared that the salt was actually declining over the wall of the fusible. And, and coating all the internal uh, surface of our furnace. So that was kind of unexpected because we were using a scalloid end. So we can we can uh, we can foresee here a lot of study on, under those uh, conditions in the future to uh, to the kind of perhaps the mechanism behind uh, the, those that behavior. So yes, a strong weighting of oxide and mm -hmm. metal surface caused some sort to leave the boat. So here, uh, uh, some future work. As I said, uh, it was kind of rush to be able to do those tests. So they are preliminary. Um, we didn't necessarily have enough time to do our homework and study very carefully how our conversion method was efficient or complete. Uh, but now we have a bit more time to go back and, uh, and then take those, uh, those uh, specimens and study them a bit. Uh, but I was thinking that uh, it was important to spread the word uh, in front of this community that these uh, steps exist and um, hopefully will be published uh, sometimes next year. interaction at the um, interface of uh, different materials, uh, which is based more on, I, my understanding is based uh, on the same, same um, principle than capillary. Sort of creep. Some creep, yeah. 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 Again, I'm not an expert, but this my understanding so far. Yes? yes. Um, I can say we have done similar tests where we also had uh, fluoride samples and by accident had the uh, oxygen in the, in the pipe oven. And we can confirm that you get corrosion all over the pipe and it goes out of the container. And everything. But I think that doesn't have anything with fission corrupt to do with it. It's to do with the oxygen. Yeah. That's kind of um, but I have a question. So, you to do these tests on non radioactive samples. I mean, you, you, you no. take some fluoride samples and dope them with uh, iodine and cesium and do it non radioactive. No, we were just yeah. running. No, no, no. But I think it would be interesting. Uh, before uh, All right, right. The soil question. Uh, yes. It would be interesting if you do the similar test in a yeah. similar way right. with non radioactive elements yeah. kind of before you publish to confirm uh, if you see the same thing. So. Yeah, I think it's uh, a yeah. uh, But again, we were very uh, constrained by the time and yeah. uh, having uh, the reactors celebrating and so. Yeah, I'm